Let's begin. OK, so here's another talk. But we're going to talk about privacy, not so much security. And we're going to explain the relationship between that. And yeah, so buckle up. Hopefully it's fun. Um, kind of the very loosely held together agenda, but we're going to talk about privacy, kind of the, some concerns, current state, things like that, state of affairs, and talk about the privacy scale, something I made up, and it's not patent pending, so go ahead and steal it. Or, you know, maybe you can do an NTF of it. I don't care. Whatever. And other stuff. So a little bit about me. Um, I reused this slide. I was being super private when I first gave this, but Colin Jackson. I go by Didymus. Um, security engineer. I have hobbies. I, I've also wanted to get more privacy enthusiast type. I'm not there yet, maybe someday. But I'm giving a talk without a mask on, so I get what I get. Anyway, cool. All right, um, a lot of the material I took to put this slide together, a lot of it was based on US laws. We're all in this room currently in the US. But so it's gonna be kind of geared towards that, but you can apply it to wherever you may be. Also, I'm not a lawyer. I don't pretend to be one much. And I'm not an expert. So these are my opinions, blah, blah, blah. You, you get what you paid for. Actually, you don't. You get less than that. And if you're looking for legal advice, you know, blah, blah, disclaimer, disclaimer face, blah, blah, blah. OK, here are some of my favorites. Um, either people that I follow or blogs or podcasts or things like that. Here are some of my privacy advocates. Um, Michael Basil does Intel Techniques. He does a really cool, really cool um, privacy, security, and OSINT podcast. I listen to that almost religiously. Uh, Justin Carroll, uh, John Jarvis, he, he gave a B-side talk and some DEF CON talks. Privacy, Rockstar, I like it. A couple others, um, camera, Kate, Kate Rose, I'm gonna talk about that in a second. Honorable mention, The Hated One, that's a really fun YouTube channel that's worth following and very privacy-centric and also keeps up to date on current affairs, privacy-wise, so it's good. All right, so why privacy? How many of you had this question before? Like, I've got, you know, why should I care about privacy? I've got nothing to hide. Just, just by a show of hands, have you, have you ever thought that? Or do you have friends or family who say that? I got nothing to, yeah, there you go, friends or family. Definitely a lot more hands. Um, this is a link to an um, academic-like paper explaining why I've got nothing to hide is a horrible argument. I'm not gonna click it. But it's by uh, Daniel, Solovy, I think, yeah. But it's like, you know, I've got nothing to hide. I, I'm okay, my life's an open book. I share stuff because I wanna feel connected. And especially like 2020 where everyone's at home, a lot of it, and it's like, I feel even less connected. And it's like, so you know, I wanna post pictures of this or, you know, different things like that. And it's like, who would care about my information? My, you know, my life is boring anyway, you know. Why, why would you want to see pictures of my kids, you know, on their first day of kindergarten, you know, holding up pictures, and why would you want that? So, some things to think about. Okay, and then privacy and security, they are different things. Some people say they're the same, they're not. They're definitely really good roommates, and when you have both of them, you have trust. It's really great. When you have one of them, it's, you know, better than nothing, but it's important, especially in the workforce, you know, securing our organizations and stuff, it's important to have both because when you have privacy and security, you have trust. Um, so yeah. So quick poll. We're going to kind of do just a live poll or whatever. I'm just by raising your hands because I'm not technical. So who is concerned about tailored advertising? All of a sudden, you, you know, you Google search something and all of a sudden you start getting ads for that something. It's like, I didn't want that. Anonymous data collection. Don't worry, don't worry. We collect your data, but we anonymize it. We replace your name with a GUID. Anyone concerned about that? You should be. <clears throat> Cameras and microphones. I mean, every laptop pretty much has a camera and a microphone. I'm staring at a camera. Our phones have microphones on it and cameras, for forward and back face. The concerns, right? You, you can rabble and stuff. This is pretty informal. Facial recognition. Who loves this? Especially with like developments they're making it, yeah, nice. Throwing the mask on, I love it. You know, especially where they're like trying to make facial recognition work from just the bridge of the nose up because everyone's wearing masks now. So these are things that concern me too. You know, cell phone tracking and location enabled apps. Got this new calculator app. It needs access to my location. 
Why would, anyway. EXIF data, first of all, who knows what EXIF data is? Who doesn't know what EXIF data is? I won't judge. Okay, EXIF data, for those that don't know, it's data that's embedded within a digital file, often like photos, videos, that it basically shows metadata. You know, especially with photos, you can glean like, you know, exposure type, f-stop. If they have geo, if they have location GPS tracking when they took the picture and you automatically do that, it'll say this picture was taken at this location at this time. Kind of glean that information. So imagine, I don't know, next time you're bored, go, go to a website or something and like download the, download the picture and then throw it into EXIF tool and just see what information is there. This is one of the way that, you know, criminal investigators as well as nefarious people will try to track people down by things they post and like, oh, let's see where this picture was taken. Oh, they were here and creepy, right? My goal at the end of this is to make you all more privacy conscious and paranoia is a good thing, I guess. We'll see. Third party data sharing. Don't you love it? Like when you get that terms and conditions have been updated and we're now going to share your party with authorized third parties or your data with third parties. I'm concerned about this. Third party data sharing. What about second party? What's that? Can anyone explain second party? I, I thought about this. I was thinking like, okay, first party, that's obviously me. Third party data is like, you know, professional like business relationship or co-created agreement or something like that. But what's second party? And it, like I was trying to explain this the other day. I was like, what if you have a partnership or a sister company or something like that and you can share data? For example, don't quote me on this, don't sue me or anything, but you know, originally there was just Facebook and then Facebook acquired Instagram. And be before they were kind of siloed, but then changed the terms and conditions. Now it's like Facebook community of whatever. And now they've got WhatsApp and they've got these others. And now there's Meta and everything within Meta is, you know, they can freely share data across it. They've, they changed the terms and conditions. Don't quote me on that, I'm not a lawyer. See slide number one. Anyway, second party data sharing, interesting. So what data is out there? This is good. This is a good thing to do for yourself just to find out what of my data is out there that's freely available or, you know, as an authorized user, I have the accounts I can go to. So you can actually go and request your Amazon data, like especially with GDPR, you know, the lovely thing where all of a sudden you get like the GDPR notification on every website and the cookies notification on every website. Some of the good things that came out with that two-bladed sword was you can request your data. You can request that their da your data be deleted if you fall under the certain criteria, like you're in the uh, European Union or like CCPA, you're in California or you do business in California or something. So these are privacy laws that have been passed that kind of give some of the rights back to you. So you can download your Facebook data, Google activity, um, go to people search websites and look yourself up. Look up your family and loved ones. Like if you're privacy conscious and have deleted yourself off these people search websites, have you deleted your significant other or someone who's associated with your address? Spouse, roommate, children, for example. So things to think about, to think about. Wow, words are hard in front of people. So here's an example. I used to have Facebook like oh, over a year ago, I got deleted it, but I downloaded um, all my Facebook data. It's a big zip file and basically they give it to you. And so I had all this. So that first column there is all the folders and everything on Facebook that I've done, which is kind of interesting. You can see all that information. And then the next one over is, that was my Amazon for one of my Amazon accounts. I just downloaded it just to see anything I'd ever, so you have, you know, Prime Video, watch history, search data, you know, image click data, all this stuff that they're collecting, like, this is, this is analytics that they can then use to and mine and find out more stuff. You can get your own data. It's sort of about you. It's not necessarily your data, but it's data about you and you can request this. Is anyone freaking out yet? I'll try harder. Okay. So John Jarvis, back at B-Sides 2017, he gave this presentation. He also did a workshop, but he gave a presentation on surveillance capital, capitalism and stuff and kind of all the stuff that's been going on, very privacy, uh, focus. He actually presented this also at DEF CON at the Crypto and Privacy Village. Opened my eyes. I was like, this is cool and terrifying at the same time. And, you know, really good talk. You should go look it up, watch it. It is well worth it. He talks about how privacy equates to secrecy and also privacy versus privacy equates to control. So I'm going to try to talk about that in an educated fashion. No guarantees. So privacy is about control. It's, it's not so much about like, you know, 
No one's allowed to know anything about me, but I want to be the one in control of what gets shared out about me. Like, yeah, you, you can know about my professional whatever. I have a LinkedIn and, you know, I work for this company or I work in this industry. I don't want you to know where my kids go to school because that's creepy. Why would you need to know that? So privacy is about controlling what information you're okay sharing kind of a thing. Um, there's a quote by Bruce Schneier, you know, privacy failure is a control failure, you know, stuff like that. Um, yeah, more about how being able to control our privacy is important. Um, privacy is the right to consent of your information. Privacy should be a human right. And privacy is constantly evolving. Um, yeah, if you follow the news at all, you know, there's always stuff. And if it's interesting, there's a lot of data breaches. It's like, what information can we get? And what customer data is valuable to us, us hackers or, you know, nefarious people? I'm not saying I'm one of them. Uh, data is everything. So-called big data is where I kind of kind of imagine us like machines and all and the exhaust is data and they're trying to take all of our data exhaust and see what they can get out of it and reverse engineer what we're interested in too and what political views we lean towards and what what marketing like you get where I'm going I'm beating the, I'm beating the dead horse okay so this is a quote from Cosmo you know he's a futurist innovator cryptanalyst you know it's all about it it's all about information. There's a war going on out there. You know, it's not about bullets or guns or anything like that. It's about who has the most information. By the way, this is from the movie Sneakers. This isn't actually a real person, but it's actually Ben's, Ben Kingsley. By the way, that's my favorite hacker movie. It's just so good, and it's aged really well. Everyone should watch it. Um, the economy basis of the internet is surveillance. Think of all the marketing analytics that um, your companies put on their web page, for example, or things that, you know, what, what are people tracking? H how many people got an email from every single website they ever bought something from on Black Friday? Yeah, that was me. It's like, oh, it, I guess it's Black Friday, aka unsubscribe day, again. We're going to talk about some tactics to avoid this. So, there is a great show, documentary on Netflix called The Great Hack. And this is just kind of a, it's looping through too fast, but it's talking about how like all this data is being collected and it's got some really cool visuals and stuff. Another similar uh, one that I really enjoyed was The Social Dilemma. It talked about the dangers of um, social media, mental health, kind of the Cambridge Analytica stuff. It, it was, yeah, it was, it's interesting stuff. Check them out, they're worth it. This is an old, old picture, but if Zuckerberg puts tape on, on his camera and microphone, maybe you should too. I don't know, this, this is very old, but there you go. Kind of interesting, makes you think. So where do I fit in? So this is where you come to the unpatented privacy scale that I made up one time in a notebook and I wrote it down. So t take it for what you want, but whatever. So more on the left side, you have like the, I have nothing to hide, my life's not that interesting, or I like sharing, I like being an open book. And then moving more towards the right, more along the, more privacy, like I'm aware of privacy, like when people ask like, hey, can enable all these cookies, and it's like, mm, I don't want to enable all those cookies, just the necessary cookies, or I have a ad blocker kind of thing. Moving more towards a privacy enthusiast, you know, what active things can I do, active steps to help better wrangle in my data that gets stolen. And then off the grid, extreme private, this, this would be like uh, law enforcement, um, people who work for government who, you know, undercover people, as well as victims of, you know, domestic abuse or different things like that who need to get away from people and, like, reset their life. That, so that's extreme private. So privacy scale, everyone following it? I kind of made it up. So if it doesn't make sense, it's because I made it up. Um, yeah, so we're going to kind of talk about some of that. So areas of privacy. So online presence, we're going to cover that a little bit. Our phones, because everyone carries a phone now. Um, things we can do for email. Uh, as well as social media, safe social media, whatever you want to call it, and then overall lifestyle. So open source intelligence, we've talked about it, we call it OSINT. This is publicly available information or information that anyone can get um, to look up information about people. Um, a lot of this is passive, like you don't let the third, you don't let the person know, or the target, some people like to call, you don't let the target know that you're creeping on them. This is just public information that's out there. So your Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, stalking, whatever. Also going through public records, uh, county records, things like that. People search websites, 100% legal, 
still creepy. So o OSINT, it's a cool skill to have to be able to do that because I'm going to challenge everyone to like go hack yourself, go look up your information and see what you can like request and clean up. Like am I okay with them having that stuff on their website? I never agreed to it but it was sold to you as a third party. Anyway, rant. This whole thing's going to be a rant by the way. Um, so let's talk about internet. Browsers. Um, avoid Chrome and there's a lot of browsers that are based on Chromium. Um, so I'm a bit of a hypocrite, big surprise, but I do use Brave which is a Chromium build but it has a lot of analytics stuff removed and privacy focused things baked into it. It is an open source project that uses Chromium but then they try to lock it down more. Um, Firefox is great. Um, Firefox is getting better. They're doing um, DNS over HTTP. They're doing, um, is it containerized tabs? I think that's what they call it, something like that where tabs can't talk to each other. You can have like a business tab or you can have like a personal or shopping or banking or something like that. Um, search engines. Use DuckDuckGo. When I wrote this, they didn't have billboards all over the interstate. Now they have billboards and it's like, I love this. This, this is cool. Honey, look at this. It's like, that's great. No, 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 this is really cool. And as we learned from a recent uh, security conference here, you know, instead of saying I Googled it, we started saying I ducked it. So we're going to try to make that a thing. It's like, oh yeah, I ducked that the other day and I saw, I read up on that. It was interesting. So duck, duck, go. I ducked it instead of, you know, I Googled it or I binged it. I know there's one or two who still bing. Um, plugins. So, oh, this is out of date. HTTPS everywhere has actually gone away. It's no longer supported. The EFF, Electronic Frontier Foundation, makes several plugins and different things to kind of take, you know, have this privacy ability in the end user. Now browsers are offering HTTPS everywhere so I can actually get rid of that slide. Um, privacy Badger, that's interesting because you can see the trackers and the different things that are going on. Same with uBlock Origin, Ghostry, NoScript, block every JSON, uh, JavaScript or other script things from running. So these are things that you can put in your browser and you can start tweaking it and adjusting it. There's other stuff. This isn't an exhaustive list. This is just to kind of get you thinking like I want to try that out kind of stuff. Phone. Okay. So most of us have a smartphone. Some of us have a dumb phone. Some of us have burner phones. It's fine. Um, so some of the things that we can do with our phones. Uh, one, try to have an alternative number. It, it, like if you're trying to go away from Google then don't go get a Google voice. You can get third party like MySudo is a great one I use. So I have like a couple MySudo email addresses and phone numbers. So it's like this is my, I give out to vendors when they ask. So you know, only vendors get this number or when I shop and it needs a phone number I do this or, you know, Google Voice I use this. Um, another thing, Mint Mobile, you can buy a Mint Mobile SIM card on Amazon for five bucks and it's like a really cheap plan and it's an actual SIM card because there's some places where you go and you put in a phone number, it's like, uh, you, you got to put in a real phone number, that's a VoIP number. It, it's like they know. Buy a Mint Mobile card and you get an actual physical SIM card with a physical number that isn't a VoIP number switch your stuff over to that number and then either do like forwarding to my sudo or like Google Voice. There's stuff out there on the internet. You should duck it and find it. See what I did there? Ah. Okay. Um, smartphone apps versus progressive web apps. PWA. So these are things where, you know, you, you can download the, the LinkedIn, LinkedIn app. Let's say that. You can download the LinkedIn app and it will have access to your phone and you can see what permissions it has access. It has access to the contacts on your phone. Well, maybe I don't want to share that or it can have all this. They want you to use the app but what if you just use the browser and go that way and you can, you know, go to LinkedIn on the browser. So progressive web apps, you go to a website and I'll show some screenshots later where you can go and you can download, sorry, go to the website, log in on the mobile browser and then say save to desktop or save to like home or something like that and it gives a little shortcut icon to that so instead of using the app, you can use a progressive web app and it's still contained in, within that mobile browser. Try it. I'm going to show some pictures later. Um, you can set a private DNS. You can make sure your phone's encrypted, password protected. You can put biometrics on your phone if you take that. You c I, I, there's some stuff, I think the EFF wrote about it or maybe the, I can't remember, Citizen Lab. But they say don't use biometrics to unlock your phone because law enforcement doesn't need a warrant to unlock your phone with biometrics. So use it for like apps or two factor but don't use it to unlock your phone. Kind of interesting. You can read more about it. You, you can duck it. Okay, privacy focused Android operating systems. So there's two big ones out there. There's Graphene OS um, and there's Lineage OS. 
Open source, no Googled services, even though they're Android based. Um, Graphene OS goes on Pixel devices. So I have a Pixel device, and as soon as there's an update, it's like Graphene OS has an update for it. But, so they only go on Pixel devices, which is interesting because it's made by Google, but it, you completely blow it away and put Graphene OS. And then there's alternative stores other than Google Play stores like F Droid and Aurora, where you can download, you know, open source versions of those apps where they've gone through the APK and like removed some of the things that the telemetry and tracking. Lineage OS, competitor, I guess, um, similar. It used to be Cyanogen mod, I believe. I could be wrong. I'm not a lawyer. Slide one. Anyway, um, supports a lot more different phone models. So, something you could look at. Hey, phone apps. Uh, I use Bouncer. This is an app that I uh, put on Android. And basically, as soon as I install an app, or it's like, hey, I'm going to take a picture of this, as soon as you do it, it's like, hey, you just granted access to your camera to this app. Do you want to keep it? Do you want to remove it? Or do you want them to schedule me to remove it in five minutes, five seconds, whatever? It's really nice because as soon as you grant access, it's like, hey, did you mean to grant access to your contacts to the calculator app? We, maybe, it's kind of nice. Um, NetGuard, Lockdown, those are two similar things like a phone-based firewall kind of thing. There's some screenshots of it. But you can block things at the phone level. And some of them don't require a rooted device. So if you don't want to root your device, that's good to know. Run a VPN client on your phone, Tor browser, uh, messaging, secure messaging. So there's Signal, um, Sudo, which is my Sudo. That's another, another messaging. Wire, Wicker, Keybase, these are all more privacy-centric into an encrypted. They all work a little different, but they work. Email, I'm sure a lot of people have heard about ProtonMail, but if you haven't, it's an uh, encrypted mail service. They don't have access to it. It's really interesting to go there and actually read their uh, um, requests like by law enforcement. Like, hey, we want to know what this person did. It's like, cool, we can tell you when they got our email. We can't tell you the contents because we don't have the keys. It's true end-to-end -end zero trust, which is nice. Uh, browsers, so these are mobile browsers you can use on phones. Um, so there's a DuckDuckGo browser. They don't make one for desktop, but they do make one for phone. Brave has a browser as well as Firefox. Camera and microphone. So this is a picture. I really like Silent Pocket. These are little stickers that you can put on your phone and basically you can cover up, you know, your stuff. You can cover up the cameras. And it's nice because they're, they're not really sticky, but they cling pretty well and you can put them on your webcam whatever. And this one is called a mic lock. So you can actually, if you have a headphone jack in your phone, you can actually plug it in and your phone will think, oh, that's the microphone. So those of you who are paranoid that your phone's always listening, you plug that in and it can't listen. Mic lock is also making one that works with iPhones and the iPhone single connect thing, whatever. Um, online storage. So Proton Mail also makes Proton Drive encrypted storage. So think like Dropbox or Google Drive type thing, but you know, Spider Oak, Proton, yeah. How am I doing on time? Oh, geez. Okay, um, I'm gonna post some of these in the Slack channel, so just some of these sites, but um, there's an email comparison site where you can check different things. Um, you can use PGP, it's a, it can take a little bit of a learning curve. Email forwarding throwaways, you can do the plus whatever, that some people catch onto that and strip it out. Okay, social media. I'm not saying you don't have social media, but I'm saying if you do do social media, have it for a specific purpose. Don't have it be your everything. Don't authenticate to sites with your social media if you can avoid it. You know, like, hey, log in, log in with your Facebook account to this site that isn't associated with Facebook, but you can log in with your Facebook thing, and then we have a data sharing agreement, we get to see your Facebook pro. Just use email. Um, so, for example, LinkedIn, lock it down. This, this is a picture of my LinkedIn, one of my LinkedIn profiles. That's from uh, thispersondoesnotexist.com. It auto-generates people's faces every time you refresh the page. So, that's on one of my LinkedIn things. That's not a real person. So, fun stuff. Lifestyle. I'm, I'm not a paid sponsor of this sweatshirt, by the way. Um, home network. So, you know, think about your home network. What, is there stuff that you can block from coming in or telemetry you can block from going out? Um, dedicated cell phones, so we talked about Mint Mobile or like having specific phone numbers for specific things, like one you give out to family, one you give out like your throwaway that you know is going to get spammed by telemarketers, stuff like that. Faraday bags, this, I don't really have time to go into this, but um, Silent Pocket, Mission Darkness, they make these Faraday bags where you can drop your phone in it and it stops all, all signals, RFID, all that stuff. It's interesting because some of the argument now is like even when you power off your phone, 
it's powered off. Yeah, but your battery's still connected. And on newer phones, you can't take out batteries. They do that, like they have little capacitors and batteries and it's like, it can still send little heartbeats or something. This is, this is your tinfoil hat people, you know, you'd have to take your phone apart to be for sure, but Faraday bags, just peace of mind. Privacy.com, Christmas is coming up. So this is a cool site where you can generate uh, one-time use credit cards or like specific use credit cards. So instead of using your one credit card for everything and then there's a credit card breach and has access to all that, privacy.com. So like when I'm buying gifts for my wife or children, since we have a shared bank account with 2FA, it's like, hey, I'm gonna be buying Christmas gifts, but it's gonna show as privacy.com because I don't want you to know where I was buying your Christmas gift and ruin Christmas. So privacy.com helps Christmas. That's not their slogan. Um, disinformation campaign, I don't really want to talk about that too much, but that's like getting magazine subscriptions or sending packages to your house under a different name. It can cause problems when the name doesn't match the postal record or things like that, or, you know, like sign up for a magazine, you'll actually read under a different name, and then they're like, oh, Bob, Bob Billison lives here. And it's like, there's no Bob Billison here, sorry. I don't know. Adversarial clothing, so this is, this, this is an example of this. This is designed to like throw garbage data in automatic license plate readers. So my brother actually has one of these, and a uh, license plate reader, and I went in front of his house and I like walked in front of it without telling him, he was like, hey, are you messing around by my house? I'm like, maybe, it's like, just said a bunch of cars drove by. It's like, no, it's this. Adversarial fashion, it's kind of fun. And then I like the concept of gray man, gray woman. Um, this is like hiding in plain sight. You know, when you're out and about and you don't want to be easily recognized, nondescript clothing. Think Jason Bourne, you know, didn't have logos, didn't have things like this. You know, kind of like, rather than being in camouflage in like a white snowy field, it's more like you blend in with your surrounding people. Like, you're non-memorable. Rant. Um, home network. So there's things you can do at home. You can... Uh, you know, PFSense is free, it's open source, you can put this on your home network, firewall things. If you have a Raspberry Pi, you can do like a Pi hole, which is really fun, block a lot of stuff, as well as Falcon Gate does similar stuff too. You can set up your own VPN, so all your connections go through your home ISP, I don't know. Um, the Hated One has some great YouTube videos on this, talking about the difference between, differences between privacy versus anonymity kind of stuff. And true anonymity is very, very, very difficult. Like. There, there's some data, like unless you have a dedicated machine, you only shop, online shop on that machine. Then you have a different machine for this kind of stuff, so. All right, demo, I'm not really gonna show demos, but I took screenshots in case demo failed. So we're gonna use that instead. Uh, you can buy VPNs, They're, Black Friday would have been the best time, but I use HMA, I'm probably gonna switch, but there's things like private internet access and Proton VPN and um, different things like this, and you can install them on your phone, so all of your data goes through a VPN, and your cell phone provider doesn't know what sites you're going to, or you can change, like I, I went to Europe this summer, and when I went to a different country, I had switched to that country, so it's like, okay, they're coming out of here. Or I had to call my credit card company here, I switched to a US one, and then I did a VoIP call home, so it didn't look suspicious, or things like that. I'm taking control of what I'm allowing to share out. So, VPNs, they're good, they're affordable. And I have a link to a VPN comparison chart that I can post in the Slack channel. So here's, here's an example of some PWAs. I got rid of these things, but like, I don't have Twitter on my phone. I use Twitter, but I go through this thing and it blocks all these ads and I do watch YouTube videos, but I watch it through the Brave browser PWA and I don't ever get ads on my mobile device. It's great, I love it. So basically you uh, would go to a website and you just say like, hey, add to home, and then it's like, cool, you wanna add to your home screen? Okay, let me know where it goes. PWAs, way better than putting a bunch of apps that have access to your phone. Uh, setting up private DNS on your phone, so this is basically route your stuff through private DNS server, so added measure of privacy. I'm not gonna go into that, I don't really have time, but something you can look at, you can set this up on your phones now. So this is Lockdown, this is that um, iOS firewall sort of app, and basically you can go through and you like turn it on, like hey, I wanna block Facebook and crypto mining and different things. Like I wanna say, you know, my phone can't send that home. It can't send that telemetry home. And here over on the right is Bouncer, where basically I can go, hey, what permission? Let's look at the camera permission. What are all the apps that have access to my camera right now? And it's a bit better than like the native one because as soon as you add it, it'll bounce and say, hey, did you wanna do that? There you go, so. So now what? 
what do we do from here? What, what's my call to action? So my call to action, figure out where you're currently at on the privacy scale. And, and it's not like a one, two, three, four. It's a scale. It slides, you know, whatever. And, you know, where are you at right now? Go to people search websites. Go request your data and see what they have on you from Amazon or Facebook. Go, go do these data requests. It's kind of, you know, if you're watching TV at night, like, you know, pull up your laptop and pull your data while you're watching TV sort of a thing. So find out where you're currently at and then decide where you want to be. Do I want to like request some of my data? Do I want to delete my social media accounts I don't use anymore, but my data is still out there? Do, where do you want to go? And then make the steps to move that direction. I have resources and stuff in this slide that I'm going to post in Slack um, with links and stuff. You know, there is this thing called the data detox, this 10-day data detox. I think it's put out by Mozilla. That you can, you can duck it and find it. Uh, Opt-out requests, evaluate accounts you need, close the accounts you don't kind of stuff. So. That's more or less it. Does anyone have any questions? I'm not an expert. Cool, cool. I'm going to show you the appendix things, and then I'm going to post them in the Slack. But anywho, feel free to connect. Um, so link to the de detox kit, how to data detox your phone, or get off of your phone and stuff. Um, request links, uh, data request links from various things. Um, VPN and email comparison charts. So they take all these different EV VPN and email providers and compare the different things they can do. Do they log? Do they do the stuff? It's really nice. Warrant canaries. We didn't cover this, but several websites have a warrant canary. So like if they get served a warrant, it's like, you're not allowed to disclose this. It's like, well, we have a warrant canary page. So it's like, have we ever received a warrant? Yes, we can say, yes, we received one. So you can go to websites and look for warrant canary. It's kind of interesting because they'll say, we can't say who requested it or what it was, but we can tell you if we've been warranted before. So. Um, several other things, resources, podcasts, books, interesting stuff, um, other stuff. I'm going to post all these links in the Slack channel. So there you have it. That's Michael Basil's extreme privacy if you want to go clear the way to the right. So, and then some random memes that I wasn't sure if I was going to use or not, but there you go. That's, yeah, that's my presentation. Thanks for coming. <laughs>